welcome to another episode of Startup Hustle Middle East. Today's episode is a very special episode because it's a project that I've been involved in as well. And today we're going to be talking to the founders of Your Fitness Coach. Uh, here and after we'll be calling it YFC. So uh, it's a fitness application and we have Johan and Sujoy over here who are the founders of the application. So uh, Johan, if you can introduce yourself first. Okay, so um, I'm the founder and CEO. Um, I came up with the idea a couple of years ago and then, uh, yeah, pitched it to Sujoy and then we decided to go into this venture together. Awesome. And Sujoy? Well, I've been in the entertainment industry for quite some time, 20 years uh, in the Middle East, uh, right. based out of Dubai and uh, been catering to the region and we've been growing over the last decade uh, globally, majorly into tech when it comes to immersive experiences and uh, we've been focused majorly in content and uh, activations and right. uh, that's how our software division came into play and our need for you know driving APIs when it comes to cross-platform integration and getting uh, our tech to be more engaging at events and exhibitions and that's where it all started so we wanted to pivot from from just being in the entertainment industry and that's when i met uh, this brilliant brain <laughs> i said great compliment there it goes did you record you know, that one brilliant yes. brain yes i did <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know so that's how it all it all started had to had to diversify a little bit but still stay focused on the tech side okay. so that's my role and i think that was a good synergy i saw there and uh, said why not join hands Awesome. So, uh, Johan, uh, you've had some uh, work with previous applications as well, right? So, uh, what did you do in that space? Yeah, so um, this is actually, for me, the third application that I've been involved in. The first time was uh, years ago when we didn't have apps for, right. for the fitness industry, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did one for, for Goldbox Fitness. Which was, which was a bit foreign at the time because I, I pitched it to the owners and I went like, okay, well, we need an application that's going to allow people to come in um, and manage their memberships and buy their PT, etc. And he was kind of looking at me and I go, why? <laughs> like, you don't, you don't need that. And I'm going, like, no, 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 but this is great. This will, this will put us apart. And fortunately, they went with it and it was really good. And then um, I went from, from Goldbox and uh, I started working for other companies and then I got the idea, all right, great, so I want to stay stay in the involvement in applications and tech. I wanted to get into in, in a project where I was more hands-on in terms of making decisions about where it wants to go. So now it's me and Joy, and like you said, you know, we have such a great synergy that this makes it so much easier to really scale really, really quickly. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's that's where I've been from. Interesting. And your background's all in, in the fitness industry, right? Yeah, I've um, I've been in the fitness industry literally my entire life, and um, so so it's an industry that I understand that I know very very well. And then I thought, you know what? Why not create something for the industry using my industry experience? Whereas okay. you know you have people coming around wanting to build something, but they 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 thought it's a great idea, but they don't really have the inner working. Of how it works, the industry experience exactly, yeah, and then and then that 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 creates an app that is great, but it doesn't really cater to everybody's needs. Hmm. So I saw a gap and uh, pitched it to Sir Joy, and he was like, "Yeah, <laughs> let's go and do this." <laughs> awesome. What makes YFC different from other fitness applications? Like, what would you say differentiates it? Well, you know, if you if you look at if you look at most applications, they have a very specific thing that they target. Right. right it's it's either measuring your calorie burn or it's either um giving you access to a facility or it's managing your membership or, or something like that mm -hmm. what we wanted to do is we wanted to create something that does all of it you yeah. want to get gym access you want to get a personal trainer you want to go and get just classes you want to be rewarded for what you do you want to be able to measure your um your, your calorie burn all of these things is in one application and, and that's been the majority of the feedback that we got even when we launched it. That was the first thing people said. So they were like, wow, I just have to open up my app. I don't have to open up 50 different apps anymore. Right. I just go on YFC and everything is there. So it's a super app concept coming to fitness. 
Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> like Super <it>. app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so mean, I, uh, yeah, I think one of the things which which we should mention here is, and this is what I've seen from feedback from hundreds of people that we've been asking, you know, their feedback on the app. The fact that it's free right. for life, mm -hmm. right? And then you have the option to upgrade yeah. and, and get, you know, a subscription-based access to our entire network of, of gyms, which is uh, growing every couple of months. We're adding new locations. Um, the, the mentality of the current, uh, let's say, services that are available across the globe is a seven-day free trial or a 14-day free trial. Right. And then either you convert to a paid subscription Mm -hmm. Or that app just stays, you know, on <laughs> your phone till you decide to delete it. Right. So our whole, I think, approach has been making sure that we have something for everyone. Okay. And every person who wants to just get in there, track their fitness and not have to pay and go to a gym also has an option to use our app in so many ways. Okay, cool. Speaking of which, we haven't really uh, narrowed down what exactly YFC does. So let's uh, let's talk about that. <laughs> what are the verticals that YFC covers and uh, how does the whole reward system and stuff work? Because I think that's a, the interesting part about it, right? All right. So I'll, I'll leave the reward part. I'll leave to Sajoy because he really loves the reward part. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I have to continuously see screenshots of like, I'm leveling up again, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so um, far, I'm top of the leaderboard. Ex ex and, and I'm, and I'm challenging the audience here. <laughs> You know, beat me. <laughs> well, well, that's one of the things that's coming, right? Like yeah. we're releasing the leaderboards next week. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So the app allows you to to track your physical activity. So whether it is in terms of your steps or in terms of doing a workout. Right. Uh, and we track that through your fitness wearable. Mm -hmm. um, we don't we don't rely on things like um, Fitbit or Stippy or you know things like that because. You, you can essentially you can cheat on that right right you can have you can have a, a little ticker with your fitbit on mm -hmm. while we're having this and then we we finish and we have like twenty thousand steps but we had literally yeah. not gone anywhere <laughs> um and then we also build an anti-cheat so that in apple health for instance you can't add manual details right we, we pick that up and then we discard that we have to have everything taken from an api and then that allows you to then build up in your levels and then we reward you for each level, which Shajoy will cover. But what the app does is it gives you that, that visual, um, uh, a visual image of how you've actually done for the day, which everybody wants to see. You know, like how hard did I really work? Like what did I do today? Right. And then if you, if you feel like, okay, fantastic. Now I want to actually go and I want to work out at a gym, mm -hmm. but I don't want to pay 12 months up front. I don't want to be bound to a 12 month contract. You can then subscribe to YFC and mm -hmm. get access to the 16 different gym locations that we have. And you can go in there as if you are a full member, okay. but you do it on a month to month basis. So cool. you're not, you're not committed and tied down to an X period of time. You go and you say, all right, this month and next month I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be using that. But in December I'm going away for the holidays. Right. Then I don't want to pay. So you don't have to freeze and worry about who's going to come and do what. Yeah, and, that, and that's the norm. Done. And that's yeah. why all our marketing communication has been no contract. Right. And that's what we keep stressing on because people are so locked in their mindset that if it's a gym subscription, online, offline, whichever mode, has a hidden charge. There is always an admin fee. There's a joining fee or an admin fee or whatever they want to name it. Correct. And then there's there's always a tricky contract, yeah. which doesn't let you exit. You know, it's yeah. it's hotel California. It's once what you get I hate in. about gyms the you most. Know, like once you I... get in, you can't get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you you go and you say right, I, I want to cancel my membership, and they go like, yeah, yeah, sure, you can cancel. Do you meet these conditions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you're, you're a guy and you go like, yeah, yeah. I want to cancel. And they go like, okay, yes, you can cancel. Uh, let me see if you're pregnant. Are you pregnant? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Oh, well, then you can't cancel. Yeah. So yeah. like, like we, do... we had a situation within like our EVP, Sheetal. Uh, I won't take the gym's name because I also still work out there. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, you know what? They've given me a one month uh, no contract deal. I was like, awesome. Because yeah. I'm going to Australia this year end and, you know, I'm going to be away for two months and I don't want to commit and then I can't freeze for two months. The freeze limit is one month. So I'm taking this one month, you know, pay as you go deal. I was like, awesome. Yeah. And then she went two weeks ago to say, okay, she's, she's on her 
leave planning for December and she would like to discontinue and come back and and they and the condition was no. So the deal is, you can pay month on month, but you paid a month in advance, and the term says you have to give us a one month notice. <laughs> you know, so so that's technically three months. Right. Yeah. So there's always a catch in these contracts. For us, there's absolutely no contract. Right. It's plain and simple. You you pay the subscription, and on your billing cycle, you can choose to discontinue or inform us in advance by tapping and obviously mm-hmm. the system itself will not charge you on the following month and then you just jump back in when you feel like yeah that's awesome so you get multi gym access which means you can access 15 different kinds of gyms not locations but different types right yeah you have look you, you've I, i wish there was 15 types of different gyms that you can go to but yes we spread it around the the market right so you Meaning have multi your crossfit yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have multi brand but you've got your CrossFit, you've got your MMA, you've got your commercial gym, you've got your yoga studios. So we try and cover the entire spectrum and we've been fortunate in that we've had great gym partners, right? right that even before we launched, mm-hmm. they were in. They were on board. And and you know that comes from building trust uh you know through your own experience and through the relationships that you have with these partners. Mm-hmm. And uh, they looked at what we have and what we presented and they were like, "Yeah, hey, we want to come on board." Okay. and um it's been it's been amazing so far so uh, so yeah and now we've like so joy said i mean this month we added uh, five new locations right and next month we're adding another location um and and this will continue you know awesome so uh, so yeah it's uh, you 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 get it all i mean when you want to have a swimming pool whether you want to have a leisure club whether you want to have commercial for it doesn't really matter you it, it fits your style yeah, cool. and and a lot of finer details that go into the user experience mm-hmm. um one of the things is the filters on our app right. so so through the the geolocation you could see what gym is closest to you and you can set your radius that you don't want to travel more than 4 kilometers and what's what's nearest on the network right. and and we would list that for you mm-hmm. so our system doesn't take up paid advertisements which will tell you okay the nearest gym is 14 kilometers away because they they've paid us <laughs> for that month <laughs> yes. right. so so we don't entertain that kind of uh, positioning okay and and through the filters it gives you the flexibility of choosing a gym that has for example towels right that's mm-hmm. a thing that's been pulled out of many gyms now post covid right. mm-hmm. but some of the locations still do or places that have a sauna or a steam right. or a place that has a swimming pool right so so you could choose what you feel like that day to do in a gym Mm-hmm. maybe you you, you want to have a steam bath right you set your filter and you choose a, a location that has that facility it may not be your daily f- preferred facility but you choose to go to that location to to enjoy that service and and besides the gyms we have a whole list of studios mm-hmm. so that doesn't come under the subscription platform that's credit based so you just top up credits okay. and and you use your credits to book the nearest yoga class or uh, a core workout group group classes basically okay and and we're just adding a lot more into the studio list as well so so those are a few things when it comes to the paid subscription side yeah. and uh like you hans said we're constantly expanding we'll definitely have a lot more to cover the entire nation and then into the region and uh and that will not stop awesome all right uh what about the rewards program because that's a key feature you have a free tier and so how does that work <laughs> the coins <laughs> yeah so we call them that's, the, that's his new thing yeah the coins the white he doesn't coins. he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't text me anymore and say like i'm going to go and burn some calories he's like no 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 i'm going to go and earn myself some coins yeah, <laughs> yeah. and soon i'll be saying we're mining <laughs> so that's that's a that's a trick answer you okay. can decode it yeah. what that means i can't reveal much <laughs> okay so the the reward system is is linked to gamification. Okay. That's the whole objective for us. Like every fitness uh facility is always you know gunning to make sure they drive uh their members to achieving goals and and through that obviously staying fit and coming to the gym. Right. right? Um this gamification process is right now still at its, at its infancy for us. Mm. So at the current stage what we're doing is obviously linking to the targets that are set through our application on closing your rings and for for the steps you take or for the my, for the calories you burn you're rewarded with coins with points 
and these points are then converted into in-app currency, which is our Y coins. And the um, the goals are obviously right now set, predefined by us. And like Johan said, we have uh, you know the leaderboards coming up. We've got uh, community engagement that's been launching soon, which would uh, you know add multiplier bonuses challenges for people driving them to earn more coins but then the question is what do we do with these coins right. like many of the apps just have points and you're just getting happy looking at those points <laughs> you know so so we want to you know raise the bar on that happiness meter and let people use their let's say sweat money mm -hmm. the Y coins on our store okay so our store is is in development uh, it would be out soon and um, this store would be focused again very strategically in in the fitness industry again so it's apparels wearables fitness wearables and consumables okay these are the three main categories under which we are bringing in brands and and we are proudly uh, already on board at some of the big brands in the industry when it comes to Oakley's we've got my zone as our fitness wearable mm -hmm. uh, and we've got several other big brands that are in in the final stages of signing to be featured on our application and through this process, you would have the option to choose how you pay okay. through our store with cash and coins. Okay. All right. So what we're doing is the benefit that we get through this distribution, mm -hmm. we ensure we pass that on to our users. And right. they would benefit from, from buying things on our store at a good deal because... It's always nice to see you saving money and using your sweat money to earn, right? So that's right. that's again motivation to saying, okay, I need to close those rings over the next week because I'm I want to buy my next pair of Adidas shoes right. with a with a fair, fair percentage of of my sweat money. And um, on the other side, also we want to make sure that our our approach is is holistic in 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 a way that uh, is fair to all, not just to satisfy our consumers and our or our paid subscribers. It's also to create this ecosystem that's sustainable, and has no at no point is is devaluing mm. our our brands, right? Um, some of the big brands don't like to see their products on a discount. Correct. Right. So we are not discounting products. Mm -hmm. We are rewarding our users for buying the product at its uh, market price, but having the choice to pay with cash plus sweat money. So you so you burn, you earn, and you spend. Right. Hi, that's a really cool concept. So uh, the so the idea is you work out, you earn fitness coins. If you want, you can choose to join a gym or not, or use the studio. But even if you're working out at home. You could download the app, earn your coins, and then spend it in the YFC store where you buy fitness-related stuff, correct? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, so essentially, what we things, do, so. essentially what we do is we, we make our margin, yeah. we make available to the user. Okay. Right? So if, 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 if we're getting, we can purchase the shoes at 70% of its retail value, yeah. that 30%, we make available to you to claim. Okay. Right? So that, that benefit there is far more than what you see out in the market. You've got apps that do rewards now, right? We're not, we're not going to mention any names, but what you do is you then have predefined, um, shall we say, rewards that you can unlock, right? right? So now you get a 20% off at, or, or you buy 20 credit from, uh, from noon, right? Mm. Yeah. So, but maybe I don't use noon. Right. So why should I now go and spend it on that? Mm -hmm. I, I want to choose what I want to spend it on. It must be something that's tangible for me. Right. And that's why we've changed our approach completely. You know, you, I mean, one of the things that I laughed at was somebody made a comparison and said, yeah, yeah, I use this app. And I'm like, okay, great. What's your reward? And he goes, like, I don't know. I can claim a 10 dirham off from Champions Dry Cleaning. <laughs> and I go, well, what, <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, I really soil yeah. your gym clothes for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what I mean? It's like, but what if I don't use them? Right. right? So, so then I've, I've actually wasted my coins. Yeah. I want to spin it on something that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. So um, it's, it's all fitness related and the store is also fitness related. So when when do you guys think the store is gonna be coming online? Bang uh, bang. <laughs> <laughs> Before yes. Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Before Christmas, so people yeah. can. Um, so what we've done is we said, look, either we could have not put the Y coins out there yet. Yeah. Right, and we could have said, all right, we will we will start that when the store launches. 
But what we wanted to do was give people the benefit of being able to rack up coins now already. Correct. So that once the store launches, you already have coins that you can spend. Right. Right. And and that's the benefit that we wanted to give people. And it was also good for us to see how people accept this. Like, is it a concept that they understand? Is it a concept that they actually want to go for? Right. And um, the response has been an overwhelming yes. So we know that it works. We know people are already out there getting their coins. Um, we even have people getting upset <laughs> when they when they finish a level. Now, at the moment, you go back to the start and you start again. But right. you have your coins mm -hmm. and you get your level up reward. But they get upset and they phone in and they go like, hey, 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 whoa, whoa. I was at 20,000 points and I'm... I'm 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 back at zero. What what what, what happened, right? So right. and and it's then we explain to them. Look, we're building the 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 levels mm -hmm. to make them uh, more difficult. But I mean, at this moment, it's our MVP, right? Yeah. But it, what was a what was so amazing to see was that people are so into it that they actually get upset when they get to the end and they go, oh, 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 where's my where's my stuff? And we go like, no, 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 just look at the top. And he goes, oh, okay, thank you. I can see my coins. You know, it's, it's, it's all there. It's all there. And, yeah. But but that's great because we can see literally we have people that is engaged in the app. Okay. And that was the primary objective. Get them to be engaged with the app. That will mean that they will start to become more active. That means that they want to go out and join a gym or join a studio. And, and from that perspective, we then start building an overall increase in people's activity. And right. That's our main goal. Okay. So uh, the e-commerce store that you plan to have is not your revenue strategy. It is an uh, incentive strategy to make people be more fit so that they can purchase more fitness-related stuff. But uh, what is the overall monetization uh, monetization? I mean, there is strategy? a level of, of monetization through the store as well. Okay. So, so there would be a small percentage of the revenue that would be retained to us. In the end, we need to justify that to the books of finance right. uh, and, and the development cost. Right. So, so tapping on development, again, we've gone native on the bill. Mm -hmm. right? So we've, we've spent a lot more than the average app does uh, when it comes to you know, creating this very intuitive experience for each platform. Right. So the iOS users feel that this is a genuine app that's built natively and and uh, they they are very familiar with the gestures on mm -hmm. on, on controlling uh, the interface likewise for android so obviously all, all of this has to be paid for and, right. and uh, yeah so we we would retain a small percentage through through the uh, uh, store. store as well mm -hmm. and then there are a lot of other strategies that are uh, behind the scenes in, in process right now we're taking up dealerships which would give us a lot more um, uh, discounts or or margins on on the product okay. we are also in the process of of producing our own apparel okay where that's a design stage right now so that all would be produced by us so then we would also have things like that that would go out as as complete uh, you know giveaways Right. against coins for people on on the top of the leaderboard because you you do need to give that option to our yeah. users right where okay i can use all my sweat money to get that t-shirt yeah. to say you know i've burnt and earned right. this thing so so there's there's lots in the pipeline when it comes to the store and how we would monetize that mm -hmm. uh, but besides that of course the 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 major revenue stream is the uh, the paid subscription okay which will now give people access of course to ua mm -hmm. across our network uh, we are pred predominantly in in Dubai and Abu Dhabi right now, but of course, in in uh, the near future, we'd cover the entire nation, and then growing into the GCC with uh, you know already Saudi in the planning, okay. uh, Doha and uh, you know Bahrain, Kuwait. So so there's 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 lots lots happening. And probably follow Elon to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll just, you just call him and go like, "Hey, can we put a YFC logo as as it takes off and everybody sees it?" <laughs> awesome, awesome. So you come from the the B two B space, and yeah. now you've this is the first app or startup that you've been involved in in, in the technology space. Like, how how different is it? in terms of uh, the approach and like uh, the things you need to do in terms of getting you know an app in front of uh, the public you know so one thing that i would say the option one team has been awesome in doing is putting up a show okay 
So, and for those of you who have not seen the opening and the launch of YFC, you must watch it. <laughs> I think we put a lot of apps to shame right. on how they've launched. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there has been an app that launched like that before. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so on on that front, uh, we've got this massive backing mm-hmm. with the Option One Group having its own verticals that work hand in glove with a business like this. So, so YFC as a startup gets you know, the entire umbrella group of companies that that feed in the expertise required. So when it comes to our verticals that take care of content creation and films, so Mm -hmm. everything that you see on social media is being done in-house by Mm -hmm. a team. So it's not outsourced. So we have complete control on the curation of content and complete control on how we want to research and develop on that content. So so we're not bound by some agency guiding us on, on the way forward. We have the freedom to experiment see right. how things churn out and then make that creative change. Uh, we've, we've got our own design studio. So when it comes to the logo, the logo was designed in-house, mm-hmm. the animations, the, the brand guideline, all of this was done by uh, Option One Creatives, ODS uh, uh, Creatives. And and then we have our labs team that has been actively involved over the last decade on technology deployment across the globe when it comes to uh, immersive experiences. So. So we're working on several other concepts right now besides the launch event, which was the, the wow factor, volumetric 3D and uh, interactive holograms and, and all all the <laughs> the toys that we put in there to right. showcase the launch <laughs> of our app. But we're now seeing on how we could do disruptive marketing mm-hmm. through through and direct marketing using tech right. and, and bring the app into the hands of, of our users. Um, okay. I think on a, on to answer your question on from B two B to B two C, we have a very strong foundation, obviously on B two B, and B two C is masses, right? Mm-hmm. I think uh, satisfying masses is a way more challenging task <laughs> than yeah. a small group of professionals, right? And the B two B, you're always dealing with professionals who understand what they're asking for, yeah, and you're catering to a requirement. Yeah. In in this business, we are basically creating a need for something that doesn't exist Mm -hmm. and making sure that we find that unique uh you know proposition to masses that appeal to an idea that says Mm -hmm. okay that's something we needed right Right. so and and i think that's what uh uh, makes this a holistic approach Mm -hmm. that's why johan's idea immediately clicked for me when the approach was not very you know, one, one way where, okay, you have subscription and it's just gyms or it's just earn coins through burning or it's just a store. Yeah. So I think there's no, no product right now in the market, in the fitness industry that, that could say they do what we do. That's why, that's why our tagline is the world's most holistic fitness application because of our approach. Awesome. And that's just the start. Like what you see in the app right now, when people look at it, they go like, wow, this is an amazing app. Mm-hmm. And and we look at it and we go like, yeah, wait until you see what's coming, <laughs> yeah. right? Because there's so many things that are in the pipeline. And I mean, a lot of people, they go and they say, okay, well, what are you going to do about competition? I mean, surely somebody's going to clone what you're doing right now. Mm-hmm. And the answer to that is always very simple. It's like, yes, that's fine. Because there's no way that you can prevent it. People are going to clone. If they want to clone, they want to clone, right? Right. And I've, I've experienced that before, even with Meals Up. It was mm-hmm. literally two and a half months after we launched, there was a... A, a clone a copycat in, in, in Saudi doing exactly what we do right no one came up with it we came up with it but right. they did that so we know clones will come in but what we've done and the way that we've done it is is so great because somebody else that wants to clone it it's going to take them at least four or five months right mm-hmm. to clone us then they need to go and expand the way that we've done it right but our dev stream for the next two years is already full yeah. Like all the additional features and things that are going to be released, it's already there. So by the time the clone comes out, they're going to have to catch up again because then we launch the next feature and the next feature. Right. So from that perspective, we've actually been very, very proactive in not just creating an app that we launch and then we go, ta-da, here we are. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. Here's where we are now. Mm-hmm. This is what it's going to be in six months. This is what are going to be in eight months. This is where we're going to be in 12 months. Right. And, and people can see that progression. And I think you have quite a few defensible things as well. First of all, your network of gyms, which 
I think you guys pay subscriptions to, correct? And on top of that, the store as well, where you have to create all these uh, other B2B partnerships with different companies in order to have a store like that. So I think there's quite a few dispensable things in the app as well. So um, speaking of f what's coming up, uh, is there anything that you can share with us in terms of uh, any interesting features coming up in the app? Um, obviously, we are launching Android now yeah. which is now in uh in a, actually just come out of qa this morning okay. which is now going into our test environment so by friday it will be you know used in our public test environment which is great um but then the thing that is coming out is leaderboards okay so the concept of leaderboards is because we are one social by nature mm -hmm. and two competitive by nature right, right? like before we did yfc we never spoke about how much calories we we burn or how we work out or what we do. Now it's like, uh, look what I did. I just leveled <laughs> up again, you know? Yeah. It's now, now there's that engagement factor. Now there's, the, the, there's that, that competition. Right. So leaderboards do exactly that. You can go onto a public leaderboard okay. that is branded for a corporate. So okay. in our scenario, RTA. Right. RTA will launch that for a week. Uh -huh. So people can actually go onto our app and take part in that challenge for a week just with an rta no 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 public it's public, it's public. Okay. public yeah so anybody that goes and they can go on there and they can be in an, and it's literally a live leaderboard okay like you can scroll up and down you can see right there's the top 10 where am i and you can you will automatically go to you but you can also say like where's my friend and mm -hmm. you can scroll up and down so we we we, we, we did a process called pagination so it means that you can literally go live stream mm-hmm up and down and see where you are, where your friends are, who, how many points are there ahead of you. If okay. you're in the top thousand, but you want to be in the top 800, mm -hmm. you know, like 800, well, how many points do you have? How right. far away from am, am I that? So leaderboards, that is a big thing. And then from there, it will progress to where it will become yeah. private leaderboards. Okay. Where we're all in a group. Yeah. We challenge only the three of us. Okay. And we have a private code that only allows us to be in that leaderboard right so i can compete with my friends yes exactly okay yeah so this is just the beginning of of community engagement yeah. so what what we're going to do is obviously phase it in because mm -hmm. we can always say let's go into dev for the next two three months and then roll out everything right uh but the human tendency is when they see something too complex yeah then then they need an orientation <laughs> on how to take things forward right right so so we we said yeah we we do it step by step there would be uh eventually options for people to to create their own community mm -hmm. even define challenges based on location geolocation for example i'm in kudra and i'll say i want to challenge somebody to beat my track right on the cycle from start point to end point mm -hmm. you know under these conditions right so so all that information could be shared and then i could challenge you uh corporates can can book us for for corporate driven uh, you know, Fitness leaderboards, yeah. not just for Dubai 30 by 30 or, or events like that, but throughout the year and, and link that to, to rewards internally within a large corporation where they want to drive health and fitness as an objective year around and, and then reward those who are, who are actively keeping themselves fit Yeah, because now HR would have the option to say, okay, those are my top 10 or my top 20 or my top 100 uh, mm -hmm. you know, performers in, in our organization who are closing rings every day, who are, you know, doing the steps they need and who are staying fit because in the end, they know that the people that are staying active and fit are going to be performing even better at work. Right. So, so we're driving this kind of awareness also to the corporates and giving them the option to, to have these um, close group challenges that would be within within the, the large government and corporate organizations that that want to have uh, an API that links to their HR list and gives access to only people that work in that organization. Uh, that's interesting. So are you guys doing corporate pricing for your gym subscriptions as well? Yeah, there is. Um, okay. Obviously, it's based on numbers. Okay. Um, obviously, the bigger your company is, the the lower the cost per person going in. Right. And there's there's multiple verticals in terms of how that payment can happen and how that deal is structured. Okay. We don't want to give away too much on <laughs> that course. because we created a deal that's that's not available in the region. Okay. Um, but it's very very alluring, and that's why we have RTA and 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 some of the big government entities wanting to come on board. 
But I think what it, what is crucial uh, in terms of that uh, precisely is is or, or particularly is the fact that we own our code, right? And that allows us to be agile, and then allows us to be able to adapt and change really, really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, we had when we launched, we had the idea that it was going to be individually driven, right? Mm -hmm. And then we will progress into corporates when corporates see the amount of people that are on the app. And right. then all of a sudden, we had to go like, whoa, hang on a second. Jeez, we've got all these corporates now. <laughs> now we've got to change the strategy, you know? Yeah. And because we own the code, we could go and say, all right, let's adapt. Mm -hmm. What is it that we're going to need to do to get these corporates on board? And how can we do it? And how quickly can we do it? Interesting. And, and when you have, um, and a lot of these apps, what they do is they would buy preset applications and just combine them together. Oh. And and what we did was we didn't want to go there mm. specifically because now you would have to do someone else's code and chase someone else's code to fit what you actually want to do. Whereas right. where you own your own code, it's like that. You can go and you say, change this. Right. I, want, I want to make a change and I want, to, I want to do that. I want to have it calculate calorie in this way. I want to do multipliers. I want to do this. I want to do that. And you can do it because it's your code. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you guys is about fundraising. Have you guys looked into fundraising? Are you thinking about fundraising? Like, what's the what's the status over there? <laughs> I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think at the the initial stages right now are are self funded. So okay. option one is is taking that up at the moment. Uh, but of course, we have a very aggressive expansion plan when it comes to our regional and, and global positioning okay. on where we want to take the application mm -hmm. uh, because it's up absolutely scalable yeah. on, on many levels, not just B2C. As you can see, we are also in the corporate space. Mm -hmm. We want a reputation in 20 years serving the government with mm -hmm. flawless productions and we want a reputation as a, as a tech provider in okay. the region with government semi-government entities so this is uh a he's so modest isn't he <laughs> he's so modest i mean he's he's rated top five right in yeah. the middle east top five mm -hmm. right and it's just come away last week with an award right yeah. And, and, and it's like so modest. Oh, like, you know, we, 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 we build a reputation and <laughs> it's not going like, listen, we are the top, top company in the Middle East. No, no, no. We, we build a reputation. <laughs> I mean, it's so modest. So modest. Now that he says it, okay, yeah, we just, we just won the award. I forgot. Because we, no, we, no, <laughs> we, we normally never apply. Right. Uh, our EVP Sheetal insists is like, it's about time, 20 years. Can we please apply this time and get an award? <laughs> <laughs> nice. And Congratulations. It's like, okay, so let's do it. And, and yeah, we won uh, for Design Tech Innovation Awards uh, Middle East by uh, the Asian Business Review. And awesome. uh, yeah, amongst some big brands like... Uh, Orido, Vodafone, uh, HCL. So it was good to be amongst uh, brands like that and, and, cool. and on that position. Yeah, so having said that, so uh, using our tech, <laughs> we've, we've got a lot more in store. Right. And uh, we just didn't want to go in for getting funding at this stage because we want to make sure we prove our capabilities rather than a pitch, right? Mm -hmm. All the VCs and investors have been approaching us for months now. Uh, we want to make sure that we can show them what we can do rather than pitch a concept on paper and say this is what we plan to do right. because there's there's lots in store and and uh, we want to make sure all those prototypes are in place mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to gamification we are we are looking at the integration of AR VR yesterday I was with Microsoft testing the the new HoloLens 2 yeah. and and how don't give everything away <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah, so there's there's lots when it comes to gamification. We're speaking to a lot of major manufacturers in in uh, hardware that would be plugged into the system and giving the option of of people uh, earning through gamification in the metaverse. Okay. Uh, we we have our tech at the Xverse right now live at huh. Jitex uh, for the forty second year of their edition. Nice. The first time they featured. Uh, the metaverse zone. So, mm -hmm. so there's some very interesting conversations I've had with some startups there who are ready to jump in okay. and uh, see how they could plug into the fitness industry. And um, yeah, so there's there's a long way and a very ambitious plan when it comes to integration of tech. 
Awesome. And, and then we'll we'll approach the VCs with uh, an offer they cannot resist. <laughs> Sounds like you guys are looking for a high valuation. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we are not gonna lie. We're not yeah. we're not gonna lie. I think that the the, the and, and I've actually had this conversation a couple of times already um, over the last month and a half, where people said, oh, "Why why is it that you're willing to spend a lot in this industry?" Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 gyms in particular is not a, it's not a cheap game you right. know? and there's a lot of people that actually realize that and they go and they say okay well i'm going to build a gym and it'll cost me two million dirhams no it's not you know mm. it's, you're going to you're going to spend two million on your equipment right and then you still right. have to do your fit out you still need to do your recruitment you still there's so much that you need to do and it's a you, you don't get a income stream right from the start because your income is deferred over right. a 12-month period mm -hmm. so and I, and i said well look here's the big thing about the fitness industry and, and I love this industry. This is my industry. I've been in it literally for almost 20 years. I love the industry. Mm -hmm. But the real, reality is this. It's not commercially efficient. Okay. You have people that come on board and it's a, you're a fantastic personal trainer, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he's got, he's got a good checkbook. Right. <laughs> right. And then he goes like, and he says, oh, I, I want to actually build a gym. You being a really good PT, mm -hmm. you, you think you understand the business. So you pitch to him and you say, hey, listen, I can run a gym for you, right? Yeah. These two guys over there, they're the two best salespeople that we have. We're going to put them in and I'm going to bring some five trainers with me. We'll bring all of our clients and that's going to be an amazing start. And we'll go to our course and we'll open something up and then boom, there we go. Right. Yay, right? No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. And, and that is where the opportunity is, where... If you have a business brain and if you have a finance mind and you've got people that understand the tech and understand that it's going to be, take time to develop something sustainable that's going to change the industry, right? that is an amazing opportunity. Mm. And that's why we've gone into it. Okay. It's because that opportunity existed. Now, either we were going to take it mm -hmm. or, or somebody, somebody else, else was. Yeah. So, you know, you jump in. So speaking of which, what do you think is the size of the fitness market? Like uh, all the verticals that you guys are looking into, including e-commerce. We have not talked about the verticals, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you, you, we just talked about the app. Yeah, exactly. yeah, there's 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 a there's a whole new genre of services <laughs> that are rolling out outside the app. Okay. Yeah, I, I, which would I don't be linked. We, 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 we will not be giving that away right now. Um, okay. I, I can tell you now that if you're just looking at just Middle East. Right. You, you're looking at an industry that's $2.3 billion. Okay. Right? That, mm -hmm. you, you're just talking about Middle East. Middle East not, only. Yeah. No, it's not, it's not big. Mm -hmm. Right? It sounds big. Yeah. But in reality, it is the sixth largest fitness industry. Okay. You go into the US, you, you're like in the hundreds of, of billions, billions. Right. Right? So the fitness industry is huge. And, and when you look at the industry, what people forget is they, they look at the gym and they go like, okay, there's the gym. That's mm -hmm. fitness industry. No, 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 no. There's equipment. There's training. There's education. There's nutrition. Right. There is uh, tech. There, there's so many different verticals that are in just that fitness line. You just go and look at how much people spend on nutrition. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. How, how many nutrition people buy proteins. Huge. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. On rehab, right? on, you know. Yeah. And you look at, look at PT. Yeah. Right? It's immense. It's absolutely immense. The amount of people that buy PT, and you're talking about 3,000 dirhams a month. Yeah. Right? yeah. People complain about having to pay 400 dirhams to be at the gym. Yeah. But they don't complain about paying 3,000 a month for a PT. Right. But, I mean, there, there's so many different verticals, and it's huge. And if you look at the Middle East, right, we're under 3% as a whole for the Middle East in terms of penetration. Yeah. Okay. Right? UAE is the second best in terms of, of uh, penetration, in terms of fitness, right? Because we're at 5.62%. Really? Who's number one? Um, the number one is um, Lebanon was third. Kuwait was at 1%. They weren't even showing. <laughs> Saudi was 26 Um It'll get to me. Bahrain, to maybe? Me. Uh, Qatar. Qatar? Qatar. Qatar, Qatar has right. a higher fitness yeah, penetration but than you. Well, you must remember, it's a very small community. Right. Right. Okay. And you've got quite a lot of brands that are going in there. So it will look higher. But realistically, mm, debatable, right? Okay. But if you look at average, countries are averaging a 14% penetration. 
okay. 14. Other countries, yeah. non-GCC that's, countries. Yeah, that's, okay. that's global, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 5.62. So we're, we're still in a development phase, right? Right. If you go and you look at the top 10 countries that are considered per capita most obese, okay. right? There are nine of the top 10 is based in the Middle East. Okay. Nine of the top 10, which is a shocking number. Right. right. But it also doesn't say a lot about the US because they're number two. <laughs> <laughs> you, go like, you go like nine others are from the Middle East and then like US number two. You know, it's like, hey, hang on a second. Something's wrong here. Who's number one? Num- number one. Should I say it? <laughs> um, let's not put other countries to shame. Okay. But, but the, the, the UAE eight years ago was number one. It was the most obese. Oh, right? really? Here's the funny thing about it is that the UAE was at a percentage of 28%, which was considered the highest, mm-hmm. right? They are now number 10, but that 28 percentage hasn't gone down. Oh, other it's countries gone have gone So higher? even though even though the UAE improved, its per capita obesity rate is at 31%. Wow. So it's gone up by 3%, but they've moved down from the top spot to 10th. Okay. Other so, countries have become worse. Exactly. Other <laughs> countries have become worse. And and when you look at those stats, the data that you get from that is that there's still a massive amount of opportunity there. Right. right. And that's when I say that unfortunately our industry isn't commercially efficient. Right. You're not they're not really understanding how to get to the user, how to get to the member, how to evaluate their needs and cater to their needs. Okay. Right, we're looking at that. Like, how how do we um, do our digital marketing? Right, like how are we going to do our social media? We're splitting it up into different genders, different age groups, different locations, and each of those get different posts. Right. If you go to a gym, right? Yeah. Even a good one, there'll be one post, and it's across everything. Yeah. It's that mm-hmm. one post. But if I'm if I'm in the thirty five to forty five category, right, my needs is different than the guy that's 25 right yeah right which is different from the female that's 25 yeah right so that's what i mean when i say commercially we're not efficient well there's there's so much that we still need to learn so much that we still need to develop in the fitness industry to really get to that level where we say right now we're pushing 20 25 percent penetration interesting yeah cool and that's what yfc aims to do Exactly right. <laughs> so uh, I know you guys are relatively new in the in the app space, but you've had previous experience with uh, doing an app, and you've had so many years of business experience in the event space. What advice would you guys have for new entrepreneurs who are looking to, you know, get into this um, you know Middle East ecosystem of startups and and technology and things like that. I'll, I'll go first because my answer will be the shortest. Okay. <laughs> the one thing that I will say is don't chase the money, right? Okay. And, and what I mean by that is you have to find the right investor. I've, I've had meetings with people and I sit there and I go like, all right, I know he's got the money. I want to pitch YFC to him. But then the more I listen to him, I go like, would I be able to work with this guy? Right. right. Is, he, is he going to understand this is going to take time? He's the kind of person that says, oh, money is no object. But you know money is an object, right? And they go, like, oh, it's not an object. And then two years later, they go like, oh, hang on a second. <laughs> right? It's, yeah, that tends you, to happen you, a lot. Yeah. Exactly, right? So don't chase the money. When I, when the way that Shijoy and I met, there was actually a different project. Okay. And, and, and there was one point where everything he said, it was like it, it clicked and it made sense. And I actually went on one point and I said to him, look, you've you got to stop talking about this because I have something that I want to pitch. <laughs> and it's not right that I pitch it because we're involved in a different project. Right. right? So you you got to stop. And then when that deal, that, that particular business venture didn't move on, mm-hmm. then I went and I said, okay, let's, let's have a meeting. And, and I just want to show you something and see what, what your take is on that. Right. And, um, and then that was the right way to go about it. We literally had what, one meeting? The second, the second meeting I came in expecting this is now going to be first negotiation and then you have second negotiation and then you sit with the, the CFO and he dissects your entire numbers. and That's the usual process, right? Correct. Second meeting, he's, he's asking the VC for finance. He goes, um, okay, so um, which bank are we going to open the account up? And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sitting there going, like, 
hang on a second. And can I ask something? Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, sure. And I go like, so, um, so we're doing this, right? And he goes like, yeah, what do you think? That's why we're here. <laughs> all right, we're doing this. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's all about finding the right person. You know, you've yeah. got to be able to work with them. And the way that we think, it's, it's almost like we've been working together for years. Because it's right. literally, he'll make a note and he'll show me, oh, this. And I go like, you know, we, we already, we just planned that. I got that. <laughs> exactly. Or I would be busy with something. I go like, you know what? I had this idea. And he goes like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. I've already got this. Yeah. So, so in terms of the synergy and the way that we think and we approach the business, that is the same. We come from different angles, mm-hmm. but the way that we are approaching it is the same. Yeah, I think it's super important to have a good co-founder who gets you and your way of thinking. Uh, you know, there's so many times that startups fail because of founder issues, you know. Uh, so, yeah, super important thing. And so, Joy, for you? I would definitely uh, echo what he said. Uh, but it's so important to make sure that there is a synergy with your investor. Mm. And when I say synergy, it's not just about them being understanding and cooperative and just, you know, uh, investing in your business is how would they contribute right you know to the success of your business because then they would understand the efforts they would understand you know what lies on on the path ahead and you know the journey if it's just a sleeping investor they just want to see returns right right and there are many like those in the last decade option one has been approached by by a lot of investors who just say, yeah, you, that's a hundred million and you know, what's going to be my return? Mm. <laughs> so, so, you know, but they, they just see the fancy stuff we do. They see the tech we do. I say, oh, you have a patent on this technology. You know what we can do with it? How much can you, how much can you make in the next five years? And then they want to get a piece a of that. A piece game, of right? that, yeah. So we've never accepted those kind of investment. We're, we're still looking at investors for option one. Yeah. And I want to make sure that these are strategic partners Right. Who would let us penetrate markets, for example, that we've not entered yet? Right. Help us in, in expansion in the tech business. Right. Uh, making sure that there is a strategy to the expansion that's not just the money, but it's also their network. Correct. That would facilitate uh, the growth uh, of our business. So when it comes to advice, I would say that's one of the main things. Choose mm. them right. Just don't go, you know, like you said, yeah. for money. And, and two is your efforts right i've seen a lot of people with a lot of brilliant ideas there's no game plan it's just this brilliant idea that everybody said wow to yeah and uh, there's no action plan there's no execution and they find investors and they think okay now the job is done i need my work life balance I'm gonna <laughs> give it that eight hours and then have my, well, you know. I don't, I don't know. That's the one thing I never, get, never get right. Yeah. Like people's perception is like, okay, when I own my own business, when I'm, I'm the boss. Yeah, I'm gonna to work do less. Anything. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna work. Less. <laughs> yeah. The reality is, it doesn't. I'm gonna yeah. take it easy. It yeah. doesn't work like that, right? Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely the opposite. You, right? Exactly right. <laughs> you think that your employees are working for you, right? Yeah. It's mm. that's not true. That's never, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're actually working for them, but, and especially with the new generation. Right. And and uh, you know I give guest lectures at EMDI, the okay. Institute for uh, Event Management, at SAE, uh, the Tech Institute, and this is the weird fact: the way generations are changing, and this mentality through media, obviously, yeah. you need to have a work-life balance. Find a place that gives you the comfort. Find a place like Google that has a slide inside the office. <laughs> you know, find a place that has foosball during your lunch break. That's not what it is. Yeah. Robot, you know, so so when you when you're into the business, if you don't make that your lifestyle, right, you're not going to succeed. And like you said, if you're going to chase the money, uh, there's no business plan right. that has been defined. But okay, this is going to make money, and then five years later, the person says, "Ah, I've made the money." <laughs> right. So <laughs> find one, uh, you know, entrepreneur yeah. who would say yes. Uh, when I started off, I decided I'm going to be a trillionaire on this date, and then that's what happened. Yeah. Right? It's, it's never been the case. If you see every successful business has been those who have been driven by passion. Right. And and that's when you put in 16 hours or 20 hours a day, mm-hmm. and you still go back and sleep peacefully <laughs> because you feel accomplished. Right. Right. I think for the last decade and a half, I've been working 16 hours plus. And I have friends and friends like, you work so hard, uh, you're not living a life. I said, that's my life. 
Right. I you enjoy, enjoy that. I am, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So right? are you are you a workaholic? Yeah, I, I've always been a workaholic. <laughs> and to him, that's yeah. a compliment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, You're a workaholic. It's like, yeah, I enjoy doing it. Yeah. I love what I'm doing because every other day, I have raised somebody by three days in my right. business. Because right. they stopped working at eight hours. I stopped at 16. Right. Or in some cases, 24. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay, that's too much. But I know I've, I've gone overboard at times. But... But for me, at the end of every year, mm. I'm two years ahead of my competition. Right. Right? Because I've given those extra hours and I've enjoyed doing it. Yeah. And and, and for me, that's that's what drives success. Right? Yeah. So so for all those brilliant brains out there with ideas, it's not just about the ideas, putting your, your flesh yeah. and your time into making it succeed with the mission to achieve that goal, not financially but from a success in, in the position of your idea. Yeah. yeah. So I've seen that time and time again. Like if you don't have passion for what you're doing, if you don't have your soul in it, then usually startups require so much effort and so much uh, of your time yeah. to build that people fizzle out and they, they, and they don't, they're not able to get to the next step of funding or, yeah. you know, of getting traction. So uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for uh, being on the show. And uh, we're going to leave links for your fitness coach in the description below. Uh, go check it out. It's free to download. It's available on iOS as of now and hopefully soon on Android as well. And uh, once you download the app, you can uh, start earning coins and spending it in the store. That's coming soon. Yeah. And, and don't forget to use the startup hustle code. <laughs> Are we getting we a code? Yeah, okay, you're getting cool. a code. <laughs> well, let's so, do that. I'll put a code. <laughs> Call Daniel. <laughs> so, so, so what's the, what's the code going to get the listeners? Um, well, the listener will uh, if he if he uses the code, he'll get a hundred coins on uh, on subscribing. Awesome. All right. Okay. Cool. So go download it. Check it out. Please uh, do subscribe and follow us on all our social media channel links are below. And if you like this episode, please leave us a like, and that really helps us with the algorithms, and so people find out about this podcast. Thank you for listening. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye.